shout out to everybody that was trying to talk about oh Trump's gonna he's gonna go to jail. Nobody went in their right mind thought that Trump would get convicted. Nobody thought that. This was pure political theater. Unnecessary, ridiculous, stupid, just foolish. And if you guys don't know, if you've not been glued to the news like me, I suppose, um, Trump did get acquitted. He beat the case. 57-43. So 57 senators voted to convict, which means all the Democrats, right? All the Democrats and the two quote unquote independents that always vote with the Democrats like Bernie Sanders. But anyway, all the Democrats, the two independents and seven Republicans. Now, who are these Republicans that voted in favor of conviction of Donald Trump on the bogus call? Like, who are these people? Okay, hold on. I know I could find it right now if I just look right quick. Republican senators. Now, let me see. Okay, so we got Burr, Cassidy, Collins, uh, Murkowski, Romney, Sass, Toomey. All right, so let's go ahead and... um. Put that right on the screen so you guys can see it for yourself. These are the seven that voted to convict Trump on the account of insurrection. All right. We'll talk about the case in a minute, but let me go ahead and get this uh, screen here. There we go. And put that right on the screen. So again, Burr, Cassidy, Collins, Murkowski, Romney, Sass, and Toomey. Are there any surprises there? Really? I mean, Lisa Murkowski... Uh, Mitt the Snake. These are all pretty much people that would do that anyway. Okay, these are your never Trumpers, your Trump haters. That's what that is. And this was just a way for them to voice their hatred for Trump. That's all to distance themselves from Trump to talk about how Trump is bad for the party. Well, if Trump is bad for the party, then who's good for the party? Mitt Romney tried to become the president and lost. Okay. Oh, it was an Obama year. Do you think he would have won an off Obama year? Could Mitt Romney have won the race in, in you know in 2016? I don't think so. Did he run in 2016? I don't know if he did, but it doesn't even really matter. These are your losers that voted to convict Trump that are Republicans. All the Democrats did, which is of no surprise. I mean, we all knew that was going to happen. So, yeah. But it's, un it's not consequential because we knew what the result was going to be. You got to have two thirds supermajority, 67 votes, and you have 57 votes. You're about 10 votes short. You're not going to get more than what you got. So there was no point in even doing this. All right. They could have been doing more important things. They could have been talking about the virus and the, the wages and all this and that, getting America back on track, bringing the economy back. That could have been their focus, but they were focused on this shame of an impeachment, this kangaroo court. They focused on that. So it was like, what are we really doing? Unnecessary completely, but Trump went ahead and beat that. And like I said, that's two acquittals, two non-convictions, two instances of beating the case within 12 months. The first time was February 6, 2020, and on that whole Ukraine phone call. And then the next one is on this, this incitement thing. Shout out to Trump's legal team. All right. They did not have to really do much, honestly, because the, the, the outcome was already decided. It was already decided the performance of Trump's lawyers or lack thereof was unimportant. You got Chris Wallace talking about, oh, well, their, their argument was stupid and it's a JV team. It matters not. It doesn't even matter if they had a good argument or a bad argument. The fact is that you, might, you didn't have the votes. OK, the Democrats weren't going to be swayed one way or the other. They were going to vote to convict these um, more wrong Republicans like Mitt Romney. They were going to vote to convict regardless they had their mind made up from the very beginning, right? So we all knew what it was. But the lawyers did a very good job of presenting evidence that fights against this whole idea of incitement. So they want to say Trump and his rhetoric, the way he was acting, what he was talking about, that incited the riot on Capitol, on, on January 6th at the Capitol. But the problem is that they had been planning, when I say they, I mean those that actually did the quote-unquote rioting, they had been planning that for weeks. So how can it be said that Trump incited the riot with his speech that day of January the 6th when the riot had been planned for months, well not months, but weeks ahead of that? The FBI knew, a lot of members of Congress knew, 
people on the ground knew, police knew. So how was that Trump's fault? You should have prepared better. Prepared better. As a matter of fact, Trump was saying, hey, law and order. We got to have law and order, right? We need to have at least 10,000 troops down there on the 6th. That's what he said. From multiple sources, we need to have at least 10,000 National Guard troops down there on the 6th. He was saying that long before January 6th even happened because there had been violence down there in D.C. from Antifa, Black Lives Matter. This had been the consistent thing. So Trump said, let's get 10,000 troops. And it didn't have him. You have pictures of one police officer trying to hold off a whole horde of people, just one guy. But then after the fact, all of us say, here come 20,000 troops. I was like, man, come on. Trump asked for 10,000 troops. You don't give it to him. But miraculously, on the next day or on that day, whenever it was, you got 20,000 troops readily available. It's like, what kind of mess is this? This is so silly. This is just blatantly ridiculous on its face. It's not even the thing they're trying to hide. They're letting you know that they're just letting this stuff go on to make Trump look bad. All that you really did was just put people in danger, just regular innocent normies for no reason, unnecessarily. People then lost their life and got injured and everything else for no reason. Okay? You did all of that to try and prove a point that ultimately didn't even work. You can just say that Trump got twice impeached and he is bad and he is this and he is that but it didn't work you try russia first of all you try the, the stormy daniels angle that didn't work you try russia that is not working because they still keep talking about russia you try a ukraine thing that didn't work you try the tax thing that didn't work you're trying the capital riot that's not working nothing you're doing is working the american people are tired of it and mitch mcconnell I don't know what kind of crack you're smoking, sir, but you need to stop. What's the point? First of all, what's the point in not voting to convict Trump, but then saying that he was responsible? <laughs> if he was responsible, then go ahead and vote to convict. You just, a, you, you know, you, it's like, it's like a, you're talking with a forked tongue. Either he's responsible or he's not. If he's not responsible, then don't vote to convict, which is what you did. You didn't vote to convict. So you can't say one thing and then do something else. You can't say no. He's, you can't say he's responsible and then not vote to hold him accountable for being responsible. It doesn't make any sense at all. So I'm not really sure what um, Mitch McConnell is on. You want to go on this speech talking about, oh, Trump did this, Trump did that. I think maybe he thinks that uh, guys like him and some of the other establishment people have control of the Republican Party and of those that vote Republican, but they don't. They don't. And I'm hearing things that they're going to say, um, well, we're going to split away and do our own party. Some of the more neocon type conservatives, you're going to have the anti-Trump conservatives that may not necessarily be neocons. They're going to have their own party. And then you're going to have the Patriot Party, those that support Trump. So if you want to divide the Republican Party into three parts, all you're doing really is just allowing the Democrats to win. The Democrats are staying together, regardless of what you see with AOC and Ilhan Omar having their own little clique within the Democratic Party. They're still all Democrats. They're not going to break away from the Democratic platform. All right. So it doesn't make any sense to try. If you want to defeat this behemoth that's the Democratic Party, if you want to defeat them, then you need to have equal numbers or more numbers than them. Trying to reduce your numbers against them only helps them succeed. But maybe that's the point. Maybe your Mitt Romney's and all these other guys want to have the Republican Party with less people in it because they want to have one party. Like I was saying many times before, the threat is not the two party system. The threat is the one party system. You don't want to have that because once you got a one party system, it's a wrap. It's a done deal. Once you have just one party in there, now you become communist China. You want to have at least two parties to have different points of view, yay or nay. You don't want to have everything just be one sided. You want to have at least two sides to the story. Now, like I said, once you get multiple parties in there, it becomes more difficult because if you have one big monolith type party, the Democratic Party, and they all vote one way, even those that are moderate, even those that are, you know, super far out there, they all vote one way. It makes no sense for us to have all these different parties that claim to be conservative, that vote in different ways. It's just kind of a backwards way of thinking. you got to have strength in numbers, regardless of what's going on. 
But the issue with the Republican Party as it stands today is that they got to decide where are we going to go? Are we going to go more towards the Trump direction? Are we going to go more towards Lincoln Project? I'll talk about them in a minute. Or are we going to go more towards the old dog, the old guard, your Mitt Romney's, your uh, Mitch McConnell? Are we going to go that direction? And Mitch McConnell, well, Mitt Romney could fit in either um, Lincoln Project or old dog. But different story. Which way are we going to go? And you've got to make a decision. And if you pick the wrong thing, you're going to be irrelevant for a very long time. Okay, very long time you're going to be irrelevant. And like I've said many times before, the government is just us. It's us as people in office. So we have to make sure the right people are in office. Because if we don't, that's going to be a disaster. You're going to have that one party system. You're going to have that thing where you must run and start coughing in your house. They can hear you outside with some kind of ultra sensitive camera. And then they come to you crib in two minutes and weld you in your house like they do in China. We don't want that going on. We want everything to be above board and safe and nice and fine but we can't have that with what's happening right now on our right if there's any division we need to have unity and a unity needs to be in the direction of trump if you go in a different direction you're not going to succeed at all on a national level anymore that's just what it is i mean i was saying for a long time you're gonna have a hard time winning even if you're a white guy if you're a white guy trying to win you're gonna have a hard time Okay, now, of course, Joe Biden got to be the oldest white man you could find that could run for president. That's true. But you got the the color lady, Kamala Harris. Okay, and don't get triggered by color because I keep hearing people of color all the time, which is the exact same thing as color people. This is you you put the same phrase, color people backwards with the other in the middle as people of color. But anyway, you got the color lady, Kamala Harris. She's in there. For the minority representation, you got the South Asian and also the Black American and also a woman. You get all those things wrapped up into one. And then when Joe Biden's like, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I'm pretty much done. I'm, I'm a wreck. My body is tired. They just put her in there and then she'll fit all the categories. It would be a big celebration on their side. But the funny part is that those that voted for Kamala and Joe and the Democratic Party are not really getting what they want. Um, I said it in the last stream. If you guys follow the the Biden L's Twitter account, oh, it's the best. It's it's beautiful. Biden L's, you know, Joe Biden, B I D E N, B I D E N L's, L S. They post um, status updates from people that are upset about their vote. Are you guys doing this fake impeachment? It didn't go anywhere, but my STEMI check didn't get here yet. Well, hey, you, you get what you asked for. That's what you wanted, right? You wanted um, the Democrats to be in power. You wanted, um, you know, you wanted to be vindictive against Trump. You wanted to go out and harass Trump and hurt Trump. Okay, well, you got it. Orange man bad. Okay, cool. You got it. Well, they're going to focus on orange man bad and doing things that don't make any sense, that won't go anywhere rather than the economic promises they gave you rather than giving you the stimulus check rather than you know helping you in the country oh we'll go do the impeachment walk again we'll do the talking dance for what was that like a week or what three four days that whole thing lasted complete waste of time and if that cost any money that was unnecessary waste of time waste of money just a big waste just to get embarrassed again on the democratic side Exactly, uh, internet. You get what you voted for. <laughs> you get what you voted for. Don't be, don't, don't cry about it. You got what you voted for. So it is what it is.